everyone i'm niruti negi and today i'm going to be talking about the art and architecture and furniture of egypt one of the ancient civilization egypt the land of mysteries it has been called the land of mysteries because of its origin the religion and the monumental architecture of this country Egyptian civilization flourished along the river Nile which is the longest river which flows from the heart of Africa to the Mediterranean Sea. It is a river which actually led to the settling down of people along its bank and that's how the Egyptian civilization came about. It was indeed the gift from the gods. The ancient Egyptians called it the gift from gods because this is one source of water which led to settling down which led to the prime occupation of the people in the ancient times the river was a blessing it flooded annually and got brought down fertile soil along its bank so the people of egypt could grow crops and they would get fertile soil each time because every year annually it would flood along with the uh, rich fertile soil also came good quality soil with which the egyptians could make uh, bricks so they went ahead and they made the clay sun dried bricks called the adobe they also started baking those bricks later and they made the kiln dried bricks and these were the uh, initial materials that the egyptian used for their architecture so we could call nile river uh, in a way a blessing uh, for this civilization apart from that because of the presence of this river they could uh, transport their things from one place to another place and it was in a way isolated from the rest of the world and that led to a lot of creativity whether it was um, in the field of art sculpture a painting writing astronomy mathematics all that was there when we talk about uh, the inventions and the creativity which was happening in egypt so let us first focus on the architecture of this country uh, the characteristic features if i have to say would be first the material that they used if you remember in my previous lectures we discussed about the uh material that the ancient chinese were using for their architecture well china there was abundance of wood and timber and that is what they were using for their architecture here in egypt it was the nile river the silt of the nile river which was used to make bricks so initially the egyptians developed this technology of making bricks from the clay they would uh, uh, make it in these uh, molds they would set it out in the sun let it dry and then use these sun dried bricks called adobe for their construction then they discovered the technique of baking these bricks and they made kiln dried bricks which was another good material for construction and then later they also used stone for their construction so this these were the three materials that uh, was used abundantly by the ancient egyptians uh, as far as the construction goes of course the uh, clay or the adobe the sun dried brick construction has not survived all the uh, weather calamities because it's a nation civilization so most of the construction which was done in adobe has not survived but what did survive is the construction which was done in kiln dried bricks and in stone and uh, the pyramids are an example of this type of construction so that is the material that e egyptians were using timber was not very very readily available if you've seen geographically egypt stands on the uh, eastern northern eastern northeastern part of africa where uh, it's very dry and not much vegetation is there so timber was hardly used uh, by the egyptians for construction uh, the other characteristic feature which we would talk about is the uh, the roofs of the uh, buildings or the houses that the egyptian made 
they had sloping uh, walls uh, which were very very thick and they had very small openings uh, why they were sloping and why they were thick was because the construction with brick was load bearing so the walls had to take the load and that is why they were very thick to withstand the weight of the roof which they had to transfer it down all the way to the foundation so that was uh, one more feature the openings were not very large because uh, uh, the lintels or the beams that they were using were of not very uh, big and large size so the openings could only be as much as uh, wide as they could find a stone lintel uh, while we are talking about the lintels and columns that would uh, i would like to mention here the kind of construction that the ancient egyptians were doing was the trabeated construction uh, like the chinese they were also using trabeated construction but the chinese were using posts and lintels made of wood while the egyptians were doing trabeated construction in stone so trabeated construction is your columns and beams which are being used of stone so this is the kind of construction that the ancient uh, egyptians were doing uh, as far as decoration or uh, enhancing of wall goes then we see in most of their temples or the ancient pyramids there is hieroglyphic hieroglyphic as you all know is a pictorial uh, way of writing so which the egyptians uh, had discovered there was uh, they were also known as the sacred writings because most of the hieroglyphic which is present represents uh, the pharaoh or the king the king is called the pharaoh in uh, ancient egypt and uh, uh, all all that he did in his life or all that is going to be in his after life used to be depicted by the hieroglyphic everything was documented in the walls so there were engraved hieroglyphics so that where they would engrave it on the walls of the temples and the pyramid or they would be painted hieroglyphics on the papyrus the papyrus uh, leaf uh, that the ancient egyptians used so uh, looking at the hieroglyphics it was a very good way of documenting all that was happening in their society at that time so a lot of history is uh, known a lot of things about the society is known about the civilization from these hieroglyphics which was uh, the sacred writings uh, the other feature uh, of the egyptian architecture is the columns they also used columns like i said they did trabeated construction so the column was very very decorative uh, they had different looking uh, capitals there was the opened uh, uh, lotus uh, capital and several other capitals which were used uh, by them so the columns were again very very ornamental there were paintings which were done on the wall the paintings uh, which were done again depicting whatever the king did in his life or whatever was going on in the society that was the main theme taken up by the painters and there were paintings all over on the walls so that is another good uh, documentation as far as history goes so in the paintings while looking at them uh, we can uh, come to know what kind of furniture form they were using uh, or uh, what is it that was uh, what is it that they believed in as far as religion goes so all that we come to know by looking at these paintings which are done on the walls of pyramid and the temples Uh, sculpture work was again uh, very very advanced we have huge sculptures done by the ancient egyptians uh, one of the uh, largest monolith out of one um, boulder or block you can say is right in front of uh, the pyramid of giza that is the sphinx it's the largest monolith of the world it if you if you have seen the picture or if you just see the picture which is going to flash after i uh, finish talking the picture of the sphinx in front of the great pyramids is uh, it's very very grand so they made huge sculpture work which was more represent representational rather than um, uh, realistic so these are the characteristic features of the architecture by the ancient egypt 
Now, when we think about Egypt, one thing that comes to our mind is the pyramids. I think that is something that we all associate with. Any layman, if you have to talk to him or if you tell him about Egypt, one thing that comes to our mind is pyramid. The monumental architecture uh, uh, made or given to the world by the ancient Egypt. So, how did the pyramids come about? Uh, well, pyramids, uh, first I would like to mention, are basically the tombs of the king, the pharaoh. Uh, again, here also the religious belief, whatever the uh, Egyptians believed in, uh, in their religion, led to the construction of the pyramids, which were uh, places where the dead uh, pharaoh was buried along with all his um, belongings because in their religion it was said that there is an afterlife when a person dies and when a person dies there is the spirit or you can say ka which uh, which uh, leaves the body but can also come back uh, at any point of time and that is why the Egyptians uh, used to balm and mummify their bodies and bury it in the pyramid so that if the dead king uh, requires it he can use that body he can use his belongings his furniture his bed whatever he required was given to him and was put along with his body in the pyramids so how did the pyramids come about one of the first attempts was uh, by uh, King Josser at Saqqara and we see the step pyramid at uh, Saqqara, which is the first uh, attempt by the uh, Egyptian pharaohs to make the pyramids. And the steps, some of, some, uh, some of the historians feel that the steps are symbolic of walking towards the heaven. And that was the ultimate um, aim, uh, that the dead uh, king or the pharaoh should go towards the heaven. So that's the first attempt by the Egyptians. Then there is the pyramid at Medim by for King Sneferu, which is the first uh, attempt to make a smooth sided pyramid. So it is in two steps and then finally on the top there is a smooth sided pyramid. However, the most uh, amazing and one of the wonders of the world is the great pyramids at Giza, which is uh, near Memphis, the ancient capital of the Egyptian people. So the great pyramids at P uh, Giza are the smooth sided pyramids uh, which were made. Uh, the largest pyramid existing there is for King Khufu, uh, which is approximately 146 meters high. Then there is uh, the uh, pyramid for King Khafre and the smallest uh, pyramid is for King Menkare. So all this is in the pyramid complex and of course there is that largest monolith, the Sphinx, which is in front of the, uh, these pyramids. The pyramids, how they were constructed, I'll come back with that. First have a look at the pictures of these pyramids. Pyramids were tombs built for the pharaohs and the queens by the ancient Egyptians. The three pyramids at Giza are the largest and best preserved of all pyramids. The Great Pyramid for the Pharaoh Khufu was built to shelter the pharaohs in the afterlife. It was believed when the pharaoh died, he became Osiris, king of the dead. The new pharaoh became Horus, god of the heavens and protector of the sun god. This cycle was symbolized by the rising and setting of the sun. Some part of a dead pharaoh's spirit was believed to remain with his body and it was thought that if the corpse did not have proper care, the former pharaoh would not be able to carry out his duties as king of the dead and disaster would befall Egypt. To prevent this disaster, dead pharaohs were mummified. He was provided in his grave vessels made of clay, stone and gold, furniture, food, etc and all that he would require in his afterlife. So those were the amazing pyramids which you saw. And to construct those pyramids, it was quite an effort. And that is what makes us wonder 
how in such an ancient time where like when we're talking about the pyramids it's almost uh, 2500 BC so at that point of time with hardly anything uh, present like what we have nowadays uh, how could the Egyptians the ancient Egyptians make a monumental structure like the pyramids it's amazing well from the fourth dynasty onwards the ancient Egyptians started construction in granite so the smooth sided pyramids which are made in granite how they were all done it's amazing so first there were workers who were at the site the quarry site where the blocks of granite were cut as per the size that was required and they were kept aside so most of the work was happening at the quarry and then uh, sometimes they would be taken on the logs to the site of construction and at other times they would be left in the river uh, and wait till the flooding season and then the boats would carry them to the site now at the site there are various theories some of them say that maybe they used a pulley system to haul up these huge granite blocks in position to construct a structure like a pyramid but there are other theories which say that they must have constructed ramps to go up so initially first they have to first locate the four uh, uh, points if you've seen a pyramid the base structure looks like a square so they would first locate the four points and make a foundation and then they would start laying the uh, granite blocks which have been cut precisely by the people at the quarry so first a layer of that is put and then the ramps are made and on the logs uh, almost about six to eight workers would carry blocks of granite to uh, the second uh, the second level of uh, the pyramid and likewise they would keep shifting till they come to the tip now what is amazing about this is that um, the, the while the blocks were put on uh, in position there were stonemasons who would check that they are put at the exact angle so they had plumb lines to check that and uh, all that was done they, they were used to be engineers to overlook the whole project so it took that's why it took almost 20 years plus to construct pyramids and such big uh, monumental buildings now after all that was done uh, there were stone shining uh, stones which were used by laborers again to shine the exterior stones so that it started shining in the sun so that is how completely these pyramids were made amazing structures monumental structures uh, which look so big and that was the whole idea the uh, king or the pharaoh who was actually called god by the uh, ancient egyptians was to have a place like this after his death and that's where the pyramids come about so those were the great amazing pyramids given to us by the Egyptians other than that there were temples which the Egyptians had uh, made and most of the temples have common parts first there would be the pylon or the most impressive entry to the gate uh, to the temple uh, complex so the pylon would have these huge walls uh, at the entrance on the walls would be paintings or there would be engraved hieroglyphic which was you know tell about the king the pharaoh or he, it would even tell about his uh, the whatever he does in his life that would be all engraved there the paintings would be made and there would be huge uh, paintings done in large scale on these pylons now once you enter the pylon you come to the courtyard area which was the open space inside the temple lined by uh, these uh, beautifully ornamented columns uh, this co uh, courtyard was a place where uh, the public or the normal people were allowed to come in uh, in times of festivals and there they would uh, give their offering to the pharaoh or to the god or goddess to whoever the temple was dedicated after the courtyard was the hypostyle which was the hall of columns here you would uh, only have uh, columns and this was like an interlink from the courtyard to the sanctuary 
which was the final uh, the place where the image or the sculpture of the god or the goddess was kept so that was a sanctuary which was not visited by the normal people uh, it was uh, only reserved for few people uh, which was uh, the sanctuary in the temple complex now, in the temple complex was also the sacred lake most of the temples uh, in egypt would have the sacred lake again for doing the religious uh, um, rites which are uh, to be performed along with the other uh, uh, activities that go along when you go for offering your prayer or for offering your uh, offerings to uh, the god so i just talked about the architecture of the ancient egypt now let's understand the furniture which was prevalent in the ancient times the furniture that the ancient egyptians made um, like i said the egyptians used to make a lot of paintings they used to do hieroglyphics and in most of the paintings we come to know about furniture making there are paintings which are done uh, in which you can see the work workshops where the laborers are working on furniture forms uh, because furniture making was a respected art in the ancient times it was a way to express your um artistic skills so it was a respected art in ancient egypt there are some woods that were used by the ancient egyptians uh, since i said wood was not readily available here so furniture was basically used by the wealthy by the kings and it was more like a status symbol for most of the people so uh, the normal average uh, people of egypt did not use furniture uh, they were conducting their lifestyle at ground floor level they would even sleep at ground and uh, they would not use many furniture forms furniture forms were basically for the people who could afford it or or i should say people who could afford wood uh, the wood that the ancient egyptians were using were uh, like cedar the fig tree and the sycamore these are some of the woods which they were using to make their furniture forms if we look at the furniture of the ancient egyptians we see that stool is one of the most common furniture form which was used by the ancient egyptians so now uh, i'll just uh, briefly tell you about the various furniture forms that the ancient egyptians were using uh, like i said stool was the most common furniture form Uh, which was found in all households even a person who was not very rich would use stools so that was a common piece of furniture it would it would be either three legged or four legged they even came about with the x stool which could fold so the folding stool was also an invention or you can say uh, something that the egyptians gave to the world so the x stool was being used Uh, most of these stools were not very high they were just about 12 to 14 inches high uh, unlike the stools nowadays which we make which is about uh, 17 to 18 inches high so these stools were used in the households very basic looking stools uh, the stools with the four legs were generally uh, very simple they were not ornamented and they were kept as it is but the folding stools again would have Uh, either webbing work of the papyrus or it would have uh, uh, the leather on top and it would fold and it could be carted away and taken anywhere so those were the stools which were used the stools used uh, by the noblemen or by the wealthy uh, they were very very ornamental uh, they were decorated there was inlay work inlay on ebony ebony is a dark colored wood on which there will be an inlay of ivory Uh, or they would be ornamented with a precious stone inlay work so those were the stools again used by the wealthy so here we see that how a furniture piece was only to reflect the status of the person who was using it besides stool there were chairs uh, chairs were not generally used by the common man it was reserved for the wealthy and most of the chairs which were used by wealthy were again highly ornamental there was painting done on it there were precious stone inlay 
there was inlay uh, of uh, ivory or they would be gold gilded uh, so gold gilding or they'll be you know thin metal uh, gold or silver or any other precious metal which was used uh, to ornament these chairs the throne chairs were highly highly ornamental but if you look at these chairs and we uh, notice the legs of these chairs now they look like legs of animals so most of these chairs uh, the inspiration was from whatever the artist or the skilled craftsman would see around him so the legs of these uh, chairs were made to uh, look like the animal legs even the paws and even to the detail of toe nails so all that was done uh, in these chairs they don't look very comfortable but uh, since they were there for a purpose to show the status of the emperor or of the wealthy person uh, that was uh, met by all the ornamentation which was done in these chairs besides chairs uh, the bed was another form which was used again beds were also used by the wealthy there is a bed which was done in simple uh, framework with the mortise and tenon joints being used and then there'll be a webbing uh, rope work webbing which would be done and on that they would put uh, a mattress and then they would sleep another interesting thing that we come to know about this civilization is the use of headrest the headrest were the crescent shaped uh, uh, you can say rests for the head the ancient egyptians did not use pillows and they used these headrests for sleeping uh, we can see the use of the headrest in many paintings which are done up uh, in uh, the old buildings in egypt so headrest was a very unique uh, looking furniture piece which was used by the egyptians instead of the pillows then there were tables which they used tables were again three legged or four legged and uh, the legs of these tables were again uh, made to resemble like the legs of animals there were couches couches to relax and recline uh, again th there was no standardization of sizes they were made as per uh, the user if or somebody is very tall then the couch would be very very long or it would be very short and the height of the couch was also not standardized it could be of any height sometimes they were quite high and you had to use tools to get on to these couches so couches were used for reclining by the egyptians they did not use it for any other purpose but basically to relax and recline and then there was the chest chest is Uh, it's like a box which was used by the ancient Egyptians to store all their valuables, uh, to keep, um, you know, even things like their clothes or expensive jewelry. All that was kept in the chest. Since there were no cupboards, there were no wardrobes in the ancient Egypt. The chest was what was used by the ancient Egyptians. Uh, the lid of these chests um, had to be lifted off because. in the ancient times the concept of hinge had not come uh, as yet, as yet and so the uh, top had to be lifted off and inside the chest there were compartments to store their things again chests were highly ornamental they were decorated they were either painted or there was sculpture work done in it or uh, there would be inlay work or precious stone work so all that was used uh, on the chest So these were the some of the basic forms of furniture which was used in ancient Egypt the stool the chair the bed the couch the headrest uh, for resting the table and the chest so have a look at the pictures that are going to come to you and observe the detailing that has been done the observe the gold work the gilding and all that has been done